Hi everyone, we're back with episode 9 of Path of Exile Betrayal. I am Mark, and we are in the Ebony Barracks. This is where we left off last time, right there is the exit to the sewers. And today we're going to go kill General Gravitious. He is relatively easy to find, being a general he doesn't hide. So we're just going to run up the center of this zone and... Ooh, we got cursed. So... We're moving even slower than usual. And uh, we're just going to go kill him and then we're going to find uh, Piety's Temple. And that was a pretty good timing on that uh, shrine. Throw our curse on him, and he dies pretty quickly. We'll grab those greaves, and we're just going to keep going. You chose the road, old friend. God put me at the end of it. The, the advantage of doing that little run was we got to the entrance of the Lunaris Temple that we were looking for. So let's go ahead and head down. And, oh, we actually should go back to the encampment because we have a couple quests to turn in. Well, we have a quest to turn in. And we probably have a quest to pick up, too. You are the true spirit of the Makoru, the shark. Not the cowardly beast that sinks its teeth into the lonely swimmer. You strike the Waikoama, the canoe, spilling a feast of men into the water. Hunters turned hunted that you dine on at your pleasure. Have this, Makoru. So she's going to give us a quest reward. I don't think there's any gem here that we really want. Uh, there's not. However, I'm going to take Consecrated Path because oh, that there. is... A skill for another character. And Hargan Game boy. doesn't have anything for us, but we will sell some stuff off. Anything useful here? Not really. Spell damage, physical damage, fire damage. Nope. Armor, energy, shield, life and mana, fire resist. Uh... That's actually better than what we're wearing. So we're going to keep that, or possibly this. No, we'll keep that. Uh, Soso helm. And a Soso belt. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on this armor. And we'll move our gem. Bring me back something nice. And oh, I'm going to sell that other piece of What's armor going on? off because we don't care about this bring me back something nice huh? and we'll dump our currency and I believe Grigor's going to have a quest for us over here he does the gemling queen she's impossible how did she survive why is she not one of the undying no no these questions can wait there's a more pressing one is she safe from the Ebony Legion. You've been busy. With the spool back where it belongs, the ribbons should be able to keep the Ebony Legion at bay. We've both seen what they can do to a man. Whether you were saving your own skin or thinking of others, it matters little to me. You succeeded where I did not. You have stood in the presence of the Gemling Queen. I can only hope to meet her in my nightmares. Despite everything else you've done, to let piety live is to threaten the existence of every living thing on this continent. Look to the west of Gravisius's camp. You'll find piety in the Lunaris Temple, cowering behind her desecrations. Okay, Goodbye. so 
as I expected, we're on the right path. We are in the Lunaris Temple, and we're going after Piety. And this time we might actually get to kill her. I'm going to go ahead and spend our skill point here. And we're just going to pick up these defensive nodes and get some more intelligence, mana, and energy shield. And then we're heading up this direction because over here somewhere is another strong totem cluster that we can pick up. So, on into the temple. And there are a lot of uh, guys in here that will do corpse explosion, which can be really painful. That's okay. We can kill them all. They also do a lot of summoning. That's okay. We can kill them all. There's one of the little mini bosses from this area. There was a corpse explosion. One of the best things about this build is the fact that everything ends up frozen on the screen, so that kind of negates their effectiveness. And usually there's an exit either either to the east or the west. Of course, it's on the other side. And we'll keep going. We're going to run into... Cole. Cole's kind of nasty. We're going to corner kill him. Pretty easy fight if you know how to handle him. And again, we can kind of follow the, the uh, carpet here to get through this relatively quickly. Good old volatile bosses. They're always fun. They release a red blob on death that will kill you if it hits you. So the strategy is, it also chases you around. So the strategy is you run through the blob and then run away because it stops as soon as you touch it. And, and so that protects I you. take my first steps into damnation and combat. And we're just going to run through this area. There's a lot of monsters in here, and hopefully we can avoid some of them. We are looking for an upsloping passage that's going to take us forward. And this looks like it. And again, we're doing the same thing here. We're going to look for an upsloping passage. There's our way up. And again, same thing. We're going to look for yet another way up. This looks like the path. It is. So when you get to the top here, there's two wagons on that side and one wagon on this side. I'm pretty sure the one wagon direction is always the way to go to move forward. The other way is just a dead end. 
This is going somewhere. Yeah, there's the way forward. There is the way forward. So we're getting relatively close to Piety now. So Piety used to be a pretty tough fight and she can still kill you, but uh, usually I have her under control. She sort of does this form shifting thing that w the damage she does in alternate forms is really high, but if you can avoid them, she's relatively easy to kill. Okay, so we have a skill. And we're just going to go ahead and take Heart and Soul, which gives us more life and more mana. And we have 500 mana now, so we should start thinking about Mind Over Matter. That's just going to give us better uh, defense. And we've upgraded all of our skills, so we, knock wood, are ready to go. I'm going to throw a portal down out here, just in case something bad happens. And we'll go in and fight Piety. I see a crafting recipe up there. Your conviction drives you, heretic. But have you thought what it might drive others to do in return? And she just did her shape shifting thing, I believe. Yep, oh, yep, she is shooting at uh, our totems. We do not want to be hit by those. All right, she probably shape shifted back. All right, we killed her. Yeah, she was off screen most of the time, but that's kind of what you have to do when she's in bow form. Rest while you can, mistress of suffering. Judgment will not go easy on you. Let's go pick up our crafting recipe. Lightning damage. I really have to pay attention to those. I'm sure I've missed a couple. And we can go back to the Sarn encampment and see what people have to say. I think everyone's going to have a comment on piety. You have claimed the most worthy of prey, Makoru. Piety, the mistress of corruption. I'm not saying the war is over, but you've given Rayclast a much needed respite. Because of you, this land lives to see another dawn. And don't forget that you've done Grigor and Clarissa a justice of some magnitude. They will wish to speak to you. Talakoda. Piety's off to meet the maker, is she? I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that little chat. Okay. Wherever he is, I'm sure Tolman knows what you've done. I know you didn't do it for him, or for me. It doesn't matter. Piety's reign of cruelty is over. Thank you. Bye. And Grigor, who is going to actually have our quest re reward and probably be depressing. Piety dies amongst her abominations, her warped dream taunting her, maddeningly out of reach. As a poet, I'm fond of that creed of justice. Here, the executioner needs recompense. And we get a skill book. Unfortunately, Piety was simply a puppet of a greater force. You've cut the strings. But the master remains. Dominus. That key you've picked up, I heard the blackguards talk of it. It's the one key to the scepter of God on the northern edge of the blackguard encampment. Only piety was permitted to carry it. Dominus accessed his laboratory at the summit of the tower via a pulley system rigged to the outside wall. That way will be barred to you. And I heard of no one not even piety, going in or coming out of the lower levels. 
Go with care, exile. I can't imagine what's inside that tower if even piety and dominus feared to tread its steps. Goodbye, okay. Exile. So our next uh, steps are outlined for us. So we still have one trial of ascendancy. We have to go to the Imperial Gardens to find the plum for Fairgraves. And now we have to find the Scepter of God in the Imperial Gardens. I am going to sell off my stuff. Uh, I'll claim this book and we can go ahead and just spend that immediately on this mana and life node. And I'll be back in a minute when we're ready to proceed. Okay, one thing we did have was we did get this veiled amulet, which I'm going to go ahead and unveil before we get going. Uh... I think I'll do this resist mod. And that actually unlocks a complete mod for us because it's only level one. And that's not useful, down. but I will just throw it in the stash in case it's useful for someone else. And we'll be ready to go in just one minute. Okay, we're back in the Ebony Barracks. And I know that the Imperial Gardens are over this direction. You can see this overgrown wall. This is a hint as to where they are if you're looking for them. And grab a couple things. I did clear my entire inventory out, so we have a clean start here. And we'll just head into the Imperial Gardens. And there is a lot of stuff in here. Uh, in addition to Chittis' Plum, we also have our Trial of Ascendancy in here. We have the um, entry to the tower. There's a waypoint and there is a side quest area, the library, which we definitely want to visit because doing the quest in there gives us access to a bunch of gems that you can't really get elsewhere. So we're definitely going to go do that. And that means I'm probably going to end up clearing a lot of this. So I'll be skipping quite a bit. But there's a, there's a big variety of monsters in here, including the infamous exploding porcupines. Who, on death, send out giant sprays of projectiles which will kill you I now see plum down there you can see it on the mini map and there's a giant worm that we're gonna kill because the worms are annoying. And there is our plum. One down, three to go. Oh, there's our waypoint. So usually the tower is going to be over this direction somewhere. This actually looks like the tower entrance. Those wagons are sort of a clue. Yep, there's our tower entrance. We could go in, but for now, what I want to do is find the library and find the Trial of Ascendancy. The Trial is usually up north. Yep, there I see the uh, lore book for the Trial of Ascendancy. And this trial is relatively easy. You just have to know where to stand. 
A leader cannot simply stride forward into the future and expect his people to be able to follow. A leader must look over his shoulder so that he can witness and understand the consequences of the path he has chosen. To ensure that his people are still with him, to ensure that he has not become lost. And we go around here, and here is our trial of ascendancy. And as you can see, there's a lot of dart traps in there, so we just have to be careful about where we stand. And we're going to get right there. And I am going to throw down some totems ahead of time because I know there's monsters in here. And we can stand right here. An emperor must know precisely where he stands. And if we look at the ascendancy plaque, we are done with the normal lab trials. We can hop back out our portal and continue on our merry way. We are looking for the library next. And the library is also usually up along this north edge. And that is the entrance to the library. So we're going to run here, run through here. I don't know if we will run the library or if we will uh, call the episode. Let's see how long it takes me to get through here. I would kind of like to finish the library today just so we can have access to gems. Ah, there's the waypoint, so we made a pretty short uh, run there. And here is Siosa, who gives us our quest. Please, do not be alarmed. I am neither monster nor murderer, though that is the duality of existence that defines San these days. My name is Siosa Fuanga, and I have the bleak honor of being the sole scholar to the imperious intellection, this grand repository of knowledge you see about you. May reason preserve us. In more mundane circumstances, it would be preposterous to ask this of you, an utter stranger. But given that I don't know in which century I might see another pair of flesh and bone hands, I... there's a door, you see, concealed behind the shelves. It leads into the archives. That's where Isius Perandus concealed his golden pages. Can you see how maddening that would be for me? No, of course you can't. Ridiculous of me to... Suffice to say that they are beyond my reach. Four varlish texts they are of priceless historical insight. Please, find my friend's golden pages and bring them to me. You will be rewarded. I vow it before the ancestors. Okay, so Siosa wants us to go find some go golden pages. With care, friend. Our inventory is fairly empty, so let's go ahead and do this. We should have plenty of time. The library is sort of, uh, it's, it's quasi-linear. Oh, there's a rogue exile. Kill him. Grab his stuff. Uh, we still don't have any currency. Ordinarily, I would throw currency on this to do it, but we don't have any currency. We get a lowly blacksmith's whetstone out of the deal. Library has a bunch of lore. And that one has no voiceover. So, and I'm not going to try and read the whole thing because that's boring. 
So I'll let it scroll past. If you really want to read it, you can. Okay. Onward. I don't think I'm going to read many of those. They're quite long. We totally went the wrong way. Okay, here is our loose candle that's going to open the secret door. And we're on to the archives. So, and right away we can see one of the books is right over to our west. So we'll head that way. This area is pretty maze-like. Oh, and that is a little mini boss, so we'll go ahead and kill him. Not that he gives us much, but... And there is our first book stand, which gives us the first golden page. Yeah, it looks like the answer to that is no, but oh, there is a unique strong box. So, so this little side trip was worthwhile. Unique strong box, always interesting. I am going to actually identify this. Uh, swarms of things. So I think we're going to get a lot of monsters here. So we'll just stand back and let our totems do the killing. And curse things as they come out so the totems are more efficient. And the monsters are getting bigger as they go. So I suspect we're going to end with one really big spider. Yep, there is a big spider. And we succeed. A uh, dagger, which probably isn't all that useful for us, but we'll see. So I'm going to run through here and pick up the rest of these pages kill a bunch of monsters, and then we'll go back and talk to Siosa. Okay, we have all four golden pages. Okay, we killed a bunch of stuff. We got all four pages. We cleared another Immortal Syndicate site downstairs, and we are back ready to talk to Siosa to see what he gives us. By the ancestors, it's good to see fresh words in front of me. Now, my translation skills are not what Isius were. I can achieve a meager paraphrase at best. But a little knowledge is better than none, is it not? Let us begin. This tapestry of truth is a threadbare cloth indeed, but at least you have allowed me to begin the first few stitches in its restoration and to settle the memory of a dear friend. In return, allow me to give you this, a little practical wisdom to improve your lot. Okay, so he is going to give us a gem reward, and I think we're going to take Fortify or Cold Penetration. Uh, I think I'm going to take Fortify, because that may be more useful in the short term. But the other thing that doing that quest for Siosa unlocks is the ability to buy gems. And we can buy pretty much any gem that is available at this point in the game, which means a lot of different gems. This is really handy for filling out our build and, uh, you know, 
getting access to stuff that we may not get as quest rewards or gems that aren't sold by standard vendors. So this was a good step. Um, I'm about ready to call this episode, but one thing I do want to do is, before I forget, to go back to the docks, to the waypoint there, which is right next to Fairgraves. And there's Fairgraves. Look at the sheen on that plum. Is it not the most delectable fruit that you've ever seen? No? Perhaps the glass of hope is for my eyes only. Wondrous! Nothing bonds two souls more soundly than murder. For that reason alone, I knew you could be relied upon. Now, for a little amateur vintnering. A quick squeeze of the plum like so into the decanter. Oh my, look how it transmutes the juice so swiftly from material to spectral. Effortless. And what an aroma. Imminent death never smelled so sweet. I believe I shall call this fine concoction the Imperial Nightcap. Now, before I get too carried away, there's the small matter of your recompense. Okay, so Fairgraves is going to give us a ring, and uh, let's go ahead and take a life ring. A toast to oh my! The longer you run from God, Fairgraves, the more damned you become. I didn't mean to interrupt his little dialogue there, but Fairgraves meets an untimely end again. Okay, I think that's a good wrapping up point. Thanks as always for watching the episode. Uh, please consider leaving a like or subscribing if you're enjoying what you're seeing. Uh, hit the notification bell to find out when new videos go out. And have a great day. Thanks for watching again. See you later.